Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Where the Heck Are the Albans? And where the heck are the Albans? Well, I am actually alone today. Uh, unfortunately, Becky uh, is back to work. So after having all winter off, she is now back to work. Today is her first day back for a, like the, for the first full week of work. Um, and of course the girls are in school. Uh, and that is very unfortunate because it is a glorious, gorgeous day in the Chicagoland area. So today's high is supposed to be 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Holy smokes, I can't believe it. So uh, just a beautiful spring day. Uh, I was lucky enough where I just, I didn't have any work today. Um, so nobody was uh, scheduling inspections. So um, I have the whole day off, so I decided to take a drive uh, about an hour west of Chicagoland, or Chicago, uh, in the Chicagoland area. It's called a little town called Batavia, Illinois. Well, it used to be a little town. It's not so little anymore, but it's grown quite a bit. But I am in Batavia, Illinois, and I thought I would, instead of wasting a day sitting at home on a beautiful day like this, let's get out. I'll show you some of the things in Batavia. Not everything, but just some highlights. Uh, and, uh, and let's enjoy this spring day. All right, let's go. So look at this plaque they got here. It's called Skaters on the Pond. So this pond that I'm standing in front of has always been a favorite for ice skaters. Look at this thing. Isn't that gorgeous? So they have this nice park area around here. In the summertime, they'll turn on the fountain over there. Uh, they got a building over here. We'll check that out in just a minute. Uh, they got a big gazebo way down there. There you go. Um, I think you can fish in here. Uh, and uh, right over here, Oh, check out this big frog. Let's go over there and just walk over there and check it out. This guy is pretty darn cool. He is massive, too. He is about the size of me. And uh, he's just checking out the, the pond over there. Uh, it's called the Peg Bond Center. Um, this is uh, kind of like a band shell. Uh, so they do have seating out here. Uh, and then you could probably bring a picnic uh, lunch or dinner uh, and uh, listen to some live music during the uh, during the summer months. In the winter months when ice skating uh, is in session on the pond this is a warming center so they get two fireplaces inside. Uh, let's see if I can get a little closer here so maybe you can see inside. The fireplace over there, there's one way over there. Uh, I am, uh, the reflection's really going to get in here. So, but you can't really see inside, but there are washrooms in here. Uh, and it is a warming center for the, the ice skaters. There's a beautiful shot of that depot over there. The big depot over there. There's the bank right there. And the caboose is right behind there. In the summertime, they also um have paddle boats and this is the paddle boat rental uh place right here and you can get a paddle boat and you can paddle around the the pond got a place for the kids to play over here oh look at these sculptures over here the children playing let's go over and take a look at that a beautiful little sculpture right here children playing in the park What's he doing? He's trying to kick somebody? Jerk. Okay, now Batavia is known as the Windmill City, or it used to be the Windmill City. It was the Windmill City capital of the world. Uh, back in the, at the turn of the century, um, and then all the way up through about 1950s, uh, there were six windmill factories in the city of Batavia. So uh, if you had a windmill, and they would ship all the way across the country, if you had a windmill, this was where it came from pretty much, was Batavia, Illinois. As a matter of fact, the uh, city of Batavia uh, turned their uh, all their city offices 
uh, from this building over here. And there it is right there. It's like the town hall and everything. This was actually one of the original windmill factories. So they actually embraced it and now they've got some of them dismantled right now because uh, they're just getting out of the winter season and they don't want them damaged. Um, however, you can see a lot of windmills out here. So there's another shot of that building right there. It says the Batavia Government Center. City of Batavia, uh, the City of Batavia Council Room was over there. Um, and then, like I said, there's a, there's a bail bond entrance over here. There's a van. Um, but uh, here's, uh, here's one of those windmills I was talking about. There is another windmill over there, but the windmill is off of it right now. And then in the park right behind me, they have several windmills. Uh, like I said, we, we'll have to come back in the spring or the, or the summer a little bit later uh, when the windmills are all up and working. There's a statue over here. I'm just gonna go over here and just see what it is. Uh, this is the, uh, it's called the Batavia Protector. It's dedicated this 18th day of May, 1997 to the past, present, and future officers of the Batavia Police Department. It's actually quite the office building and factory. Uh, there's a plaque on the wall. It says this building dates from 1901. So this is Windmill Court. It's dedicated to Batavia's historic windmill companies. The Goodhue Special Windmill, manufactured by the Appleton Manufacturing Company in Batavia, Illinois. Look at this one. This one's pretty elaborate. And this was made by the Challenge Company of Batavia, Illinois. That was pretty darn cool. They've actually got this one on the ground. I do believe that this one go that one goes on this one here. So they're in the process of putting them back up. This part of the factory that you see over here, this is now the police department for Batavia. I love these little placards that are along the path. Iced harvesting. Before there was refrigeration, iced was harvested from the river during winter months and stored in ice houses along the banks of the river until summer. The houses were located along the west bank of the pond and the east bank of the river. All right, so the History Museum just opened up. We're gonna walk into Batavia's first bank. Check it out. So there is William Coffin, and uh, he's the one that started the Coffin Bank right here in Batavia. Very first bank. There's the bank as it looked right there. It even had a storm cellar at the time. And there was the original sign right there for the bank. And the bank did actually go a little bit further out. There was an extra room on the back, and that's where the vault was. So his house, uh, William Coffin, this was his house. Look at the size of that house. And the bank sat right here. And there is a picture of the house in the banquet center, sat right there. But look at the old equipment here. Check this out. We had a, that was the original copy machine. That was the, uh, the duplicating machine. <laughs> and of course, the big, this was called a, a comptometer. So it was like a 
early version of a like a compute between a computer and a calculator. Of course, the typewriters, an adding machine, and this is a dictaphone. So basically, you would talk into that speaker, and then there was these wax cartridges that would slide inside, it would go inside here, and then as you talked, it would record your voice on that wax disc. And uh, it was basically like the first tape recorder. Okay, I believe we can go on to the caboose. Let's check that out. So primitive bathrooms were found on an early caboose. Open this door to see the bathroom. So we can undo this. And there's a lantern and it was basically just like an outhouse. That's all it was. Toilet paper was a luxury, so they uh, used to tear pages out of the Sears catalog for uh, wiping purposes. A ladder here, and they could go up there. And the purpose of a caboose, actually, was to make sure that hobos and freeloaders were not riding on the top of the train cars. So they couldn't see the top of the train cars, so the cabooses were added. And they would stand up here, and if they caught you, you were in big trouble. They would beat you up like crazy and throw you right off the train. The little pot belly stove they had back here, they would use this for both warmth and for cooking. Where did the men who worked on the caboose sleep? They slept in bedrolls that were placed on these benches. So this was their sleeping quarters as well. So this is what the inside of a caboose looks like. Pretty darn interesting, huh? All right, let's go on into the museum. Well, I turned the corner and this guy scared the bejesus out of me. He looks so real. I did that too, and a lot of other people going up there. So this guy, this is what the uh, the ticket agent would look like if you were gonna buy a ticket to get on the train. And uh, this is actually a representation of Thomas L. Cleveland. He was the Batavia yeah. station agent from 1860 to 1881. He was the cousin of President Grover Cleveland. So they have a great museum here. A peek inside Batavia history. Grocery store. Okay. You wanted to stay out of that place. That was nothing but trouble. The pool hall right there. Oh. There's a picture inside the saloon. And there's the yeah. post office. Yeah. So there's a. So this right here is your basic telegraph. So they would oh. do Morse code right. over um. this. Do 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 do. And that's how they communicated from station to station. So back in 1950, this is what the Batavia High School band uniform looked like. It was pretty sharp. And there is a telephone, or what it would have looked like in 1915. And uh, they also had a Illinois... Bell Telephone Office here in Batavia, 2 East Wilson Street, back in 1916, and there's all the operators. So little do people know that Mary Todd Lincoln has some history here in Batavia. Um, about 10 years after the president was assassinated, uh, her son, Robert, had her institutionalized uh, in the Batavia house and uh, that was a uh, 
hmm, how do you say it? I guess it was uh, for people that had mental issues, things like that. And uh, this is the actual bed that uh, Mary had right here. Uh, she had a very hard life, as you all know. Uh, she lost all but one of her sons. Her husband was assassinated. And uh, the toll, it just took a toll on her. And, uh, but this is, uh, this is her bed and her nightgown right here. So here is more of the story. Um, her son, Robert, uh, brought her to a, an insanity hearing held in Chicago and she was judged insane and committed to Bellevue Place, a private institution located here in Batavia. And her stay there lasted from May through September of 1875. So he gained her freedom from Bellevue Place, uh, although still under judgment of insanity, and went to live with her sister in Springfield. So she lived with her sister from 1875, and then she died with her at, at her sister's house in 1882. And this would have been furniture at the sanatorium. And here is a uh, picture of the Batavia Institute. Well, there's more stuff downstairs. Uh, there's this downstairs section. There's a basement here, um, and it is uh, it's all the history of Batavia and uh, what it looked like, like the trolley tracks on Batavia Avenue. And there's the uh, Aurora Elgin Chicago train station there. Very interesting. It's weird to look at this picture from 1910 and kind of place where we are today. We're over here right now, and this was that, that pond. They, they've actually blocked it off, but this is where the, um, the factory was that made the windmills. That's where we were over there. That was, uh, that was crazy, that's crazy. That was the Appleton Manufacturing Company right there. Here they talk about Batavia being the City of Energy, of course, starting out with windmills. This was the windmill city. Um, but then goes right into Fermilab. There's the, an aerial view of Fermilab. This is a pretty cool model right here. The Batavia Body Company from 1912. They were a producer of farm implements and machinery and they would use this truck for sales and advertisement. So this man right here, his name is Earl C. Newton. He was a, uh, a wagon maker, and uh, he came here to, uh, to Batavia and uh, built wagons for a living. This was his cane right here, and look at this. One big wagon. Does anybody know what that is? No peeking at the sign. That is a time card punch. This was used in the Batavia Metal Products Company. Um, but yeah, you would actually stick your card in there and then it would punch your card and it would. Uh, That's how you got paid. So not only did they make windmills here, they also made like big industrial fans. Believe it or not, this is a fanning machine. And this was made by the Appleton Manufacturing Company, which is now the uh, City Hall. Here's some more uh, examples of those windmills. Here's kind of that crazy looking one. That is awesome. This is a corn sheller machine that was made by the Apple, Appleton Manufacturing Company. You would uh, basically stick corn in there and you would turn a big wheel on here and it would shell the corn for you. 
And uh, believe it or not, my grandfather in Tennessee owned one of these things, and it was one of my favorite things to play around because of the fact that it used to shoot the corn out, the seeds, bam, 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 like a machine gun. And uh, he didn't mind me playing on it because that means less work for him on the farm. <laughs> so in uh, 1878, there were 10 limestone quarries in successful operation, uh, operation. And Batavia actually earned the nickname Rock City. Uh, and they did a lot of, a lot, a lot of work here. So, of course, the museum is free, but you can donate. So, yes, can donate. we're going to throw $5 right in there because this is a great museum. And that's a picture there you of go. what it will look like right over there. And yeah. there it is. So, so, toward their expansion project. so, this is where it goes up to now, correct? Yeah, that little piece there at the end of that. And then this is going to be added on. Mm -hmm. And like I said, they've raised probably a good almost seven hundred thousand yeah. out of the two million, so they're almost halfway there. Yeah, that's right. yeah, um, that's so that is awesome. So, so my five dollars is going to a good cause. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, it is. So this is part of the historic downtown uh, of Batavia. Uh, it's called River Street, and I wanted to show you this sculpture over here. It's called the Self Made Man. And it was uh, made by Bobby Carlisle, as the artist, in 1996. And uh, as you can see, he is sculpting himself, making him a self-made man. Now, a couple interesting things about this sculpture is, uh, well, number one, there are four of them, identical statues. Uh, one right here in Batavia, Illinois. It's another one in St. Louis, Missouri. One in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And one in, uh, I believe it's in South Carolina. I will verify that for you. Back in uh, 2011, uh, three guys were climbing this statue and knocked him over and broke him. Uh, and they had to be he had to be uh, fixed and then re-anchored, and now he is uh, very well anchored to his post here. But um, they tried to sue the city uh, for damages <laughs> that they created, but uh, the courts went against them and said, no, you guys were stupid enough to break it, you bought it. So you have to pay for all the repairs. So I'm now on the other side of the river, but that is the city hall. Uh, so that was part of the old windmill factory. And there's the police department over there. This is just a shot from the other side. But I know they even have windmills on this side of the building. Look at that. See it over there? I even love some of these old homes uh, as we're going through here. Some of these homes date back to the 1800s. I mean, look at that. That is gorgeous. I was just looking here. Look at, look at the side of this house or in the front of this house. There's a look at this cow. So he's made out of an old oil drum. <laughs> That's pretty darn cool. <laughs> oh man, we're getting there. Look at that. 68 degrees. It's about 11.45 in the morning, so getting up to that 70 plus mark. Okay, so I don't know how many of you have ever heard of something called the Fermi Lab, or Fermi Laboratories. Um, it is also in Batavia. Um, at the time that it was built, it was the world's largest particle accelerator. Um, if you don't know what that is, that's one of those big machines. It's in a circular uh, pattern, and the, that circle is like a mile long. And that's where they blast atoms through, and then they smash them into things, or smash them into other atoms. And then that blows the our atom apart, and then they find the things that are smaller than the atom. Um, 
very interesting science. Um, uh, they are on the search, of course, for the elusive um, God particle, um, the beginning of all things. Um, and uh, now, like I said, at the time that it was built, it was the world's largest. It is no longer the world's largest. It, I believe it's the second largest in the United States. Uh, there was one that was built in Texas uh, that is a little bit bigger than Fermilab. And the world's biggest is in Geneva, Switzerland. Um, and uh, they just made a breakthrough discovery as not too, too far long ago. I want to say it was like in 2012 or 2013. And they found uh, what they thought they had the smallest particle, uh, less than an atom. They took that smallest particle, blasted it in through, and found another uh, smaller fragment. So it just keeps going on and on and on. Um, but we're going to take a, just a drive through Fermilab. I don't know if we're going to go in it or not. Maybe. I, I we'll see. Um, but it is a government facility, um, so uh, they're going to ask me for my ID. I'm not going to be able to film uh, at, the, at the guard's gate. Uh, but um, right as we're going in, there's a sculpture, and it was actually designed by the creator of Fermilab. Um, and it's called... Um, let me get back to you on that. Hyperbolic Obsolisk. Um, you have to drive under it when you get into Fermilab. So as we're just about to get in there, I'll show you that sculpture. All right, so we're about to pull up to Fermilab. Uh, and there's the sculpture there right in front of us. And that is the Fermilab right there off to the side. So here's just a good shot of that sculpture right there. That's pretty darn cool. And then there's the gate that I have to go through with the guard. Uh, and just show them my ID and make sure I'm not some crazy terrorist. Here's a map of Fermilab. Um, that big circular object that you see right there that's actually underwater. Uh, that's the actual particle accelerator itself. Um, but then there, these are all the grounds. And you can uh, visit different things. They've got parks in here. Um, science labs uh, like I said they've even got a place where there's bison in here so we're gonna try to find that as well so right on the opposite side of this this is actually part of the particle accelerator uh, fascinating stuff there's another big building over here um, but yes all this place just dedicated to science Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we do have a bison sighting. Many, several bisons, as a matter of fact, uh, right up by that barn over there. Uh, we're going to get up close and personal here in just a second. Oh, oh, oh my. Look at this. There's even a couple coming up here. Look at the size of these things. That is amazing. So there is an entire herd of these things. And these are American bison. Many people call them buffalo, but unfortunately, of course, the buffalo are all extinct. And they were wiped out when the settlers came over and basically killed them all for their fur. So the only thing that are left are their cousins, the bison. These things are magnificent. lady over here is saying, forget this, I'm going to the barn. So just to give you an idea, Fermi Lab itself is way over there. I came in on the opposite side of that building, and then I drove and drove and drove through probably a good maybe mile and a half or so of winding roads. 
uh, and then I turned around and uh, so I'm still pretty good ways away from the lab itself and then the the bison are right over here on the side I wasn't the only people uh, that uh, came a couple over there they uh, decided to join me over there and uh, but there are the bison right there and uh, you had to hoof through a little pardon the pun uh, but we had to hoof through a little bit of a field there to get over by the bison to get a good look at them. Now I probably have time today, but I don't think I'm going to go actually into Fermi Labs. Um, they do give tours. Um, there are self-guided tours, uh, but if you do come on a Wednesday, uh, they actually give you a little bit more in-depth of a tour. Um, but uh, there is there is Fermi Lab itself. That's where all the scientists work and the, all the office workers, things like that. Pretty interesting place. We'll we will come back and we'll go through it. I want to come back with the kids. Um, that's uh, one of the reasons I don't want to go in today because uh, I want to experience this with the kids. A very cool place. As we're heading out of Fermi Lab, we're going to get another look at that sculpture. Check it out. On the one side, as we entered it, everything was black. But as we exit, everything is orange. And uh, just something interesting also about this sculpture. The steel that was used in this sculpture, that came from a ship. And the ship that that steel is from is from the USS Princeton. Uh, the USS Princeton is the ship that plucked the Apollo 10 uh, capsule out of the, out of the water uh, from re-entry uh, from the ocean. So uh, the very ship uh, after it was retired, it was disassembled, uh, the USS Princeton, and the steel came here to Fermi Lab, and uh, that's where that uh, sculpture was made out of. Who knew? I just pulled over to the side of the road here uh, to get a glimpse back at the Fermi Lab and the sculpture. Listen to all the frogs. Let's see if you can hear them. They're all up in there somewhere. See, you can hear them all over the place, you just can't see them. The dragonflies buzzing all over the place too. What the? Now, of course, I am not afraid of dragonflies. However, right then, that one startled me because it landed on me and it touched my neck. <laughs> what the heck is that? You know, I'm out here hearing all these eerie frogs chattering and uh, something like that just startled me a little. <laughs> well, those frogs are the king of camouflage. Let me tell you, uh, I could not spot one. Um, now, what one could do is come back here at night uh, with a flashlight and you shine it across the water and all of the frog's eyes will glow yellow. So, and that's where you would be able to see them um, and find them. What a glorious sight. Look at that. 74 degrees here in the Chicagoland area. So as I said, I only touched on a few things here in Batavia, but I hope you enjoyed com coming along on our visit, or at least my visit. <laughs> so I must be spoiled. I actually had to turn on my air conditioner just for a little while, uh, just to cool it off when I first got back in the car. Um, so if you like what you see, as always, please give us a big thumbs up. 
don't forget to subscribe down below and we'll see you guys next time on Where the Heck Are the Albans? <laughs> Bye everyone.